Hello. Intense colicky pain in the back, one of the worst pains of all, blood in the urine, nausea, vomiting. All of this can be a symptom of kidney stones, the subject of today's video. In it, I will address the main questions about kidney stones. What is good for expelling kidney stones? Where is the pain from the kidney stones? Do tomatoes cause kidney stones? These and other questions I will answer, in addition to talking about the types of kidney stones, and at the end of the video, I will give 8 science-backed tips for you to never suffer from this. So stay until the end. But before that, start enjoying the video, and let's see if we can reach the goal of 150,000 likes for me to make more videos on the subject. Help out, and also, subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed, so you don't miss our health tips, and spread this video to as many people as possible through WhatsApp, Facebook, and Telegram. And tell me, do you suffer from kidney stones? How many crises have you had? Which part of the United States or the world are you from? Write it down below. Kidney stones affect about 10% of the world's population, with an increase in cases in recent years, especially in young adults. And in the summer, the risk of having a renal colic crisis increases by 30%, as people sweat more and do not hydrate sufficiently. So, what is a kidney stone? What do your kidneys do? They remove waste by filtering the blood to produce urine. Sometimes, when you have a lot of waste and don't drink enough fluids, these waste products can accumulate and join together in the kidneys, forming small crystals. These crystals attract other waste and chemicals to form a solid object, the kidney stone. Many people have kidney stones and don't know they are there, discovering them through ultrasound or finding a small amount of bleeding in the urine test. While these stones remain in the kidney, the person will not feel anything. But when the stone leaves the kidney, it falls into the ureter. As the ureter is very narrow, it gets stuck and impacted, causing the intense pain of renal colic. Who is more at risk of having kidney stones? Men. The risk of kidney stones is about 11% in men and 9% in women, with a peak between 30 and 40 years old. Additionally, those with comorbidities, diseases such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and obesity, can increase the risk of kidney stones. What are the causes of kidney stones? Genetic. If someone in your family has kidney stones, you will be at a higher risk. And, of course, if you have had kidney stones before, you are also at a higher risk. Not drinking enough water. Eating unhealthy. Diets high in sodium, sugar, or excessive protein. If you have had bariatric surgery or intestinal surgery. If you supplement with calcium or vitamin C excessively, excessive vitamin D will. Those with kidney diseases such as polycystic kidney disease. Certain medical conditions, such as hypercalciuria, which is elevated levels of calcium in the urine. Parathyroid disease, gout. Inflammatory bowel disease. Chronic diarrhea. And cystic fibrosis, and others. What are the symptoms of kidney stones? Intense and sharp pain in the side and back just below the ribs, and then at the top, is different from back pain, which is usually lower. And this pain can radiate to the lower abdomen and groin as well as to the testicle or the tip of the penis. The pain comes in waves and fluctuates in intensity, at one point it gets stronger, and at another, it gets weaker. The person may have pain or a burning sensation when urinating. Nausea and vomiting may occur. Blood pressure may drop or sometimes rise. Cold sweats. Urine may be pink, red, or brown. Sometimes, the urine can become cloudy or have a bad smell. The pain caused by a kidney stone can change, for example, by moving to a different location or increasing in intensity as the stone moves through the urinary tract. What are the types of kidney stones? Four main types. Calcium. Uric acid. Struvite. And cysteine. Calcium stones are the most frequent, about 80% of stones. There are two types of calcium stones, calcium oxalate and calcium phosphate. Calcium oxalate is by far the most common type. Some people have too much calcium in their urine, which increases the risk of calcium stones. Even with normal amounts of calcium in the urine, calcium stones can form for other reasons, as oxalate is a substance produced daily by the liver or absorbed from the diet. Certain vegetables, as well as nuts and chocolate, have a high oxalate content. Some risk factors that I mentioned, are high doses of vitamin D, bariatric surgery, and metabolic disorders that can increase the concentration of calcium or oxalate in the urine. The other type of calcium stones is calcium phosphate. This type of stone is more common in metabolic conditions, 
such as renal tubular acidosis, and can also be associated with certain medications, such as topiramate. The other type is uric acid stones. This type can form in people who eat a high-protein diet and those with diabetes or metabolic syndrome and are associated with gout. Certain genetic factors can also increase the risk of uric acid stones. The other type is struvite stones which form in response to a urinary tract infection and can grow rapidly and become very large. In the vast majority of cases, it occurs in women with a urinary tract infection. The fourth type is cysteine stones. They are rarer and can form in people with a hereditary disorder called cystinuria, which causes the kidneys to excrete a lot of this amino acid. Why is it interesting to examine the content of the stone? Knowing the type of kidney stone you have can determine its cause and may give clues on how to reduce the risk of forming more kidney stones. So, if possible, if you see a stone fall into the toilet, try to capture it, of course, with all possible hygiene, so that your urologist can analyze the type of stone. And what is the treatment for kidney stones? It depends on the size of the stone, what it is made of, whether it is causing pain, and whether it is blocking the urinary tract. Kidney stones. In most cases, can be removed without causing persistent damage. And usually, they come back if you don't do the right things. This happens more often if the cause is not found and treated. And, as possible complications, it may include ureteral obstruction which can damage your kidney, or urinary tract infection that can cause sepsis or even scar the kidneys. Among the treatments is ureteroscopy, where the urologist passes an instrument, ureteroscope, through the urethra to remove stones located in the ureter. If it is a larger stone, it can be treated through direct percutaneous access to the kidney. Of course, you may have heard of extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy, which applies shockwaves to the stones from a device, without having to cut the patient or introduce anything through the urethra. In some cases, especially with uric acid stones, you can try to dissolve the stones only with medications that alkalize the urine's pH. And now, let's move on to the most important part of the video, how to reduce the risk of kidney stones. The 8 Tips First tip and the most important of all. Drink plenty of water. Water is the best defense against kidney stones. How much? 2-3 to three liters of water per day. And you may end up needing more than that if you do a lot of sports, and sweat a lot if it's very hot and dry in your city. But it's always good to see the color of your urine. It has to be clear, not yellow, orange, or brown. Also, if the volume of urine is good it should be at least 2.5 liters of urine per day. Second tip, the one I always talk about here on the channel, reduce salt. Why? Because if you have a high calcium content in your urine, you have to reduce sodium because excess salt makes the person excrete more calcium in the urine, worsening the problem. And salt is present in everything, especially processed foods like cookies, fries, bread, pizzas, cold cuts, ham, salami, bologna, sausage, Americans consume almost twice the recommended amount of sodium. Third tip drink lemon juice and eat oranges. Both oranges and lemons contain citrate, which is considered a natural inhibitor of kidney stones. Citrate does not allow calcium to bind to anything else, preventing kidney stones from forming. Fourth tip drink milk and eat yogurts, but avoid calcium supplements. It may seem like a lie, but calcium-rich foods reduce the risk of calcium stones, as I mentioned, the most common type. Also, dairy products in general help block oxalate and other substances in the digestive tract that can cause stones. However, calcium supplements can increase your risk of stones. So, eat more dairy and avoid calcium supplements. Fifth tip eat plenty of fruits. I talk a lot about fruits on the channel. Fruits have a high water and fiber content, offer high levels of magnesium and citrate, and are more alkaline, which helps fight kidney stones. Sixth tip reduce animal proteins. If you have uric acid stones or relatively high calcium and uric acid in the urine, you should limit animal protein intake, except for dairy. Animal proteins have high levels of purines, which can make you excrete more uric acid and be more prone to uric acid stones. Lean meats are better than fatty ones because fatty foods make the intestine absorb more oxalate. 7. Limit some types of teas, sodas, and soy milk. A 2012 study from Loyola University School of Medicine found that drinking too much black tea can contribute to kidney stones because this tea is rich in oxalate. Sodas are also bad, especially colas. Phosphoric acid makes sodas fizz, and it increases the risk of kidney stones. 
And sugar, like salt, increases the amount of calcium in the urine. As for soy milk, it is rich in oxalate. And coffee? A study published in the American Journal of Kidney Diseases with over 500,000 people who had kidney stones found that those who drank more coffee had a lower risk of kidney stones. So coffee is good. 8. Be careful with some vegetables that are rich in oxalate. What are they? Spinach. Rhubarb. Peanuts. Beets. And sweet potatoes all of them are great for health. But they are also rich in oxalates. If you can consume a serving of dairy while ingesting a high oxalate food, the calcium that will bind to the oxalate will not be absorbed. So, there's still a way to eat spinach without increasing your risk so much. And chonka piedra tea, does it work? Believe it or not, it works. In recent years, several scientific studies have proven that using chonka piedra tea helps fight kidney stones. Drinking the tea daily for up to three weeks helps eliminate kidney stones, as this tea has a diuretic action and has properties that relax the ureters, like alpha blocker medications, such as tamsulosin, that we use for this. Recent studies done at UNIFESP also found that the tea prevents the aggregation of calcium oxalate crystals. Moreover, the tea has the advantage of being a natural and cheap product and has proven to be non-toxic. And tomatoes, do they cause kidney stones? No. Tomato is a fruit with little oxalate, so it does not increase your risk of kidney stones. In conclusion, follow the tips to avoid the risk of stones and all the pain and discomfort associated with them, and keep your kidneys healthy. Liked it? And what will be the next video you will watch? I'll leave two recommendations here on the side. Remember to subscribe. And until the next video. Thank you very much.